And hello and welcome everyone to another installment of Retro Hero Video. We're back again, Matt. It's our first show of 2023. It is, yeah, our first retro show of 2023, it's yes. True enough, our own special little side series that we do every so often when you know there's not enough news to uh, justify doing a full comic multiverse episode. Yeah, and uh, and also, whenever we do one of these as well, there will be big news the next week. That's usually always how it happens, and it's like, <laughs> God damn it, why why did I do it that way? <laughs> yeah, two hours after this show's fi after we finish here, James Gunn's going to announce all these DC films. That's yeah, how it works. Yeah, here's our new Superman, everyone's Chris Pratt. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do love that people are amazed where it's like, oh, could, could he be doing that? Could he hire more Guardians people to be in DC stuff? Yeah, the man might hire his friends. That's a thing that might happen. <laughs> Shocking, right? That he It's already, know, yeah. it's yeah. already kind of happened in the Suicide Squad. He hired mm -hmm. some people he knew. Yep. Mm. But yes, for those who remember when we last left off with Retro Hero Video... Uh, we had started our brand new arc talking about 90s animated comic book shows, which basically means image shows, because that's what it was. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Image shows are like, yeah, uh, independent, creator-owned mm -hmm. comics that just got TV shows for some reason. Yes, in a golden era from like 1992 to like 1999. Mm-hmm. It was a real golden time for them. And of course, on today's show, we're going to be talking about The Savage Dragon. Yes, yes, the the weird savage dragon who's kind of a DC character, but not. Yes, yes, Dino Cop and getting a lot of play recently, his multiversal yes. uh, equivalent, which, man, I guess that means that Joshua Williamson is a savage dragon fan, because why would you put that character in if you weren't a fan? Exactly. <laughs> now, what what is your history with Savage Dragon, Matt? I figured I would ask. Did, did you ever watch this show growing up? Uh, my history is basically non-existent. <laughs> but you're aware of Savage Dragon because it's kind of I'm hard. I'm aware of Savage Dragon as Dino Cop more than I am as Savage Dragon. Well, there you go. The We'll, we'll, you know, we'll get more into it because we'll do a brief little history of the character itself because I feel like a lot of people are in the same boat as you where they're like, well, I know of him and I know when he's being parodied, but I don't know much about him. Or if you're like mm -hmm. me, did grow up watching the show, but do not remember a goddamn thing about it. Yeah, I, I, I won, I'm sure I would have seen it as a kid, but I just, yeah, don't remember any of it. I, I imagine Australian TV was probably much like Canadian television, that is, they bought the rights of this show to air with a bunch of other stuff, where in the States, mm -hmm. you would only be able to watch it if you had the USA Network, which was actually a pay channel. Yep, yep, so. I, I think, I want to say it was probably, like, bundled with, like, a bunch of cartoons mm -hmm. on, like, a weekday morning or something. Yep. For me, it was Teletoon at Night, actually, which blew me away. Okay. And I always remember this show being a little bit more racier and a little bit more adult than it actually was because they played it at night in between, like, Duckman and, like, a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, what, what a weird block of shows to put together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but of course, as always, everyone, we just can't talk about Savage Dragon. This is a video book club where we dig a little deeper. We're cultural anthropologists, me and Matt. We got to talk yeah. about the time that produced this show, because art is not created in a vacuum, after all. And uh, for the Savage yeah. Dragon, its first episode entitled RSVP dropped September 21st, 1995. So, you know, let's let, let's look at what people were, you know, banging at that time. You know, what was the number one song in the world uh, as of September 1995. Can you guess, Matt? We've visited the 90s quite a few times on this show, and as we have noticed, it was a very eclectic time for music, so it's kind of hard mm. to gauge, you know, what the big song is. It is, yeah. yeah it could be anything from NSYNC, mm. Backstreet Boys, Britney Spears, mm. anything like that. Could be some grunge stuff. I don't think we've actually gotten any grunge stuff yet, which is surprising, because when you think 90s yeah. music, you think Nirvana. But no, actually, the number one song of September 1995 was actually Coolio's Gangster's Paradise. Makes sense. So, good song. Good yeah, it's, song. it's a really good song. It's, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's his only hit, actually. <laughs> It's his only hit, and you go back and you listen to it now, and man, it still holds up. There's some goddamn amazing verses in this song. Mm, I there see, is, yeah. I see myself in the pistol smoke. Too much TV watching got me chasing dreams. 
Why is it so hard to see that those we heard are you and me? It's a real, like, serious-ass song with an amazing hook to it, and it's a song that Coolio took really fucking seriously. <laughs> so much to the point, I think he's the only person that we know of who got really pissed off when Weird Al did a parody version. Oh, really? Did he? Oh, he was furious. He was like, if I see Weird Al, I'm kicking his ass over Amish Paradise. <laughs> Which is also a pretty good parody song, too. Probably one of Weird Al's best. And Coolio did not did not enjoy it. <laughs> did he hate it because maybe it got to the point where it it was pop more popular than his song? I, I'm sure that had something to do with it. I'm sure it also had something to do with the fact that Coolio was, like, trying to be really genuine in this song. The fact that basically no one took his song seriously after the Weird Al version because you could only think of all the jokes he's making about churning butter and raising barns and shit while this poor yeah. guy is pouring his heart out. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Also, I mean, the video is kind of ridiculous and Coolio kind of had a weird like public persona himself where it's like you know he put his hair in like crazy upturned braids and everything yep he yep. seemed like a weird dude coolio all things a little bit yeah seemed like a bit of a weird dude and sadly no longer with us no that's right he died he died not too long ago as well yeah not too long ago at all it's a shame i would have loved to have seen him and al quash the beef <laughs> <laughs> you know increase the peace you know that's, that's the rap feud that I really want to see, and Coolio and Weird Al. <laughs> I haven't watched that new Weird Al movie yet. I wonder, do they mention that in the Weird Al movie? I don't know. See, I should check that. I, I know, like, the movie is not, like, a real music biopic. It's making fun of music biopics with a guy yeah. who always made fun of songs. But it would be interesting if they paid lip service to it, at least. It would be, yeah. Uh, now, from the world of music to the world of movies, and honestly, the number one movie of September 1995, this one genuinely surprised me, because again, it's a genre that I don't think we really see anymore. It was Tom Hanks, Apollo 13. Yeah, it's a Ron Howard film. Yeah, pretty damn good Ron Howard film about, you know, a really big and important moment in not just American history, but world history. Yeah, well, that's the thing with Ron Howard. Like, all his films are like... Like, even if you, like, don't like what they're about, they're interesting in no. that, like, like they're really well put together. Very much so. And again, this feels like a genre, like the big important history movie. It feels like we get less and less of these every year. Yeah, we haven't had, like, like I can't think of, like, the last, like, big history movie we got. Like Dunkirk, maybe? Yeah, maybe, I guess. And even then, that one wasn't really sold as like, oh, it's a big historical blockbuster. Yeah, yeah. Like, they, like history movies used to be blockbusters, and I know that's hard for, mm -hmm. like, younger fans out there to believe, but they weren't just, you know, like, weird passion projects or weird, like, art movie projects. Like, no, they were blockbusters. They were the big things, yeah. Like, yo, have you seen Titanic? Yo, have you seen Apollo 13? Have you heard these, like, based on real event things? Pretty dope. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. We should do that for 2023. 20, Let's make history dope again. Because <laughs> there's some amazing stories from history where it's like, really? How has no one made a movie about that? It's true. It's it, there, there is some great, great stories. I'm, I'm trying to think of like what, like what are some big ones that haven't been done yet. It does feel like most of the big ones have been covered. Like, you know, how many movies have we seen them invade Normandy? Exactly, yeah. How many times have we seen the Kennedy assassination? Mm-hmm. I, uh, I was watching another crazy video there about uh, a time when America very almost nearly okayed hippo meat to be eaten. <laughs> and apparently the dude who was like, yo, we should really get this hippo meat eaten. That guy was apparently some sort of like weird double agent spy who like fought for like colonialist armies and then like went and fought for the Nazis too and everything. What? <laughs> yeah, and that this dude was just like, a, he was like a master spy. I'm like, how has no one made a movie about this guy? His life sounds <laughs> fascinating. And he sounds like a massive piece of shit, too, who was always <laughs> on the wrong side of every battle he was ever on. He's trying to, he's trying to, trying to uh, undermine the U.S. government with hippo meat. With hippo meat, yeah. Because, yeah, there was apparently a point in U.S. history where it's like, ah, oh, there's not enough meat to go around. What are we going to do with the meat? I don't know. We could eat hippo, maybe. <laughs> and because this guy had fought in, like, South Africa and everything. It's like, well, you know, hippo's actually quite delicious. 
Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta eat that hippo. Uh, Puppet History did that video. Check that out, everyone, on Hippo Meat. It's pretty good. <laughs> nice, nice. Now, television is an even more strange time for 1995. Apparently, the most popular show the year that Savage Dragon the cartoon came out was actually Lonesome Dove the Outlaw Years, a Western, like, TV soap opera. Never fucking heard of it. It's your granddaddy's Deadwood. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, really. Again, this is like the 90s where like westerns were like kind of had a little bit of a revival. They did. Like there were so many like TV shows like uh, like based around westerns and mm -hmm. like they had like movies like Unforgiven and yep. Tombstone and all that sort of stuff coming out. They came back in a big way. I do not know anything about Lonesome Dove. The only thing I kind of know is I think Bret Hart guested on an episode one time. Looking at the cover, I know who I know Tracy Scoggins played Cat Grant in the Lois and Clark uh, oh, Adventures of Superman show, and that's right. the only person I know on this poster. <laughs> yep, I don't know any of these other people either. <laughs> nope, yeah, I don't know a goddamn person on this show, but apparently they were popular enough to be on TV back in the day. Yeah, yeah, it's the 90s. Anyone could be on TV back then. We're, we're going to piss off, like, our one fan who apparently is also the <laughs> biggest Lonesome Dove fan. It's yeah. like, actually, I'll have you know, Eric McCormick went on to have a very good voice acting career. <laughs> Which is actually how it happened, too. You were on a Western TV show, and then you did cartoons for a couple years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, shit, uh, Commissioner Gordon, that's where he came from, basically. He did old, like, black and white uh, Western shows before he got that gig on Batman the Animated Series. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, as weird as TV is, gaming is even weirder because you know what else happened in September 1995? What was that? The PlayStation 1 was released in North America. Oof. Oof. The PlayStation 1 came out, which means actually gauging what the number one game in the world is at that time is really difficult because we start seeing schisms and people keep start yep. keeping bad books. Uh, like, according to an old uh, friggin' Famitsu article here, apparently uh, the biggest game in the world, the biggest selling one, is like one of those Dragon Quest games on the Famicom that never came to the United States. Yeah, okay, so, like, yeah, that's sort of like, how is that the world's, yeah. how is that the best-selling game if yeah. it was only in release in, like, oh, Japan. I imagine Japan. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't sound right. And then it's like, well, according to Nintendo, the highest-selling game was actually Yoshi's Island, the original one, in 1995. <laughs> and I'm like, well, they seem a little biased in that one. A little, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Chrono Trigger came out this year, so I think if we were going just solely by, you know, games that had, you know, like, big impacts culturally and on the genre, that's a good one to go to and mm -hmm. because the playstation came out apparently the 10th biggest selling one playstation only got into this running that i was reading at number 10 it was with the first tekken yeah i can i can see that absolutely it was with the first tekken i'm like well why is that coming in so low only at number 10 i'm like well it's a new console not everyone was buying it and also if you were a fighting game fan you were probably playing mortal kombat 3 that also came out that year mm -hmm. i i'm also surprised that something like ridge racer yeah. isn't on the list just because like that was like quite a uh i i want to say like a novelty back then like a racing yeah, game yeah. you can just play at home instead of the arcade yeah again that's funny the same article i was reading the same wikipedia page also had like the biggest arcade games and i'm like yeah arcades weren't dead yet at the point they were Ooh. still kind of viable what what a transitional period 1995 was for arts and culture really really so much is changing and it keeps on changing too because naturally we're a comic book show and we got to talk about what comic books were really big in 95 and for the month of september they dropped spawn issue number 36 yeah good old spawn the the king of the 90s the king of the 90s and he was the number one selling book at that time outselling yep. marvel and dc amazing this is peak image comics peak peak yeah. spawn not only had this book but he also had an event going on too so he was in the number one spot and in like the number six spot nice was this around that was at the same time mcfarlane was doing spider-man uh well no because uh, they had the big image exodus but no but then i guess they did get him back i don't know actually yeah. when that was the timeline is a little weird on this but yeah this was spawn and image at the height of their power and they weren't the only one because we were seeing a big indie revolution because also from image the number two best-selling issue of september 95 was gen 13 number five <laughs> From Choi and Company, man, this is probably like the last time Gen 13 was ever on top. 
Yeah, yeah, really. Everyone keeps saying, like, oh, is now the time for a Gen 13 revival? You know, Gen 13 was pretty popular back in the day. They tried it recently, didn't they? Did they? Or are we thinking of another book that they tried to resurrect? I'm fairly... I'm, I, I want to say, like, during, like, around the time of the New 52, they tried it, and it just failed to be spectacularly maybe maybe you're right and of course because it's the 90s too marvel wasn't too far from the top right under that we had uncanny x-man uh 236 oh it's the scott labdell years x-men written by Oof. famous sex pest scott labdell Oof. <laughs> this this was also probably the most popular labdell's work ever was at the time when you look at the cover mm. this is what 90s comics look like to me big over design designed x-men characters grappling yeah. with each other yeah yeah very it's, very hyper stylized and everything yeah I, I can smell this newsprint i can feel it <laughs> because this was the time when i started buying comics for the first time and yep these are these are what the covers look like this is this is what got six-year-old me into it nice <laughs> also i didn't get the picture here but dc was way at number 10 for the top 10 of that month and it was uh man of steel superman or superman oh man of that steel. that's just that's that that that's honestly surprising i thought it would have been like a batman book yeah it's all the way down at 10 but then again this is 95 so superman was dead and had just come back mm -hmm. that's true yeah and I looked at the story and I'm like, oh, is anything interesting happening in the storyline at that time? No, nothing. It's just like a random yeah. issue of Superman doing stuff. Yeah, random. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, and you wonder why Image was eating their lunch at this time because both the big two <laughs> seemed so unexciting in 95. Yeah, when was when would have been their next, uh, both of the next big two's events mm, around 95? Good question. Again, it's just such like a blame. I mean, surely X-Men would have had some big stuff going on that would have got people interested again. I think in the last video we talked about the wedding and everything. So they, mm -hmm. they had some tricks left to pull. They had some tricks up their sleeve. It would just take a little bit. Yeah. Now, to talk about Savage Dragon, of course, we have to talk about its creator, Eric Larson. And that's uh, Larson with an I, not an O. Yes. Uh, he was, of course, uh, like all of the Image founders, a mega, mega star artist who left in their big, uh, big creative coup. They wanted to be their own bosses. They wanted more recognition. They wanted more money. Larson, you would probably know if you knew him at all from his work on the Hulk. He drew some really good Hulks yes. back in the day. He did, yeah. And the irony isn't lost on anyone that he went from drawing one big green muscle-bound character to drawing another big <laughs> green muscle-bound character for the next 30 years. Yeah, of course. Because that's another thing that people don't, I think, understand when we talk about the Savage Dragon. The Savage Dragon is second only to Spawn in that it never stopped from the 90s. It's still Dude. going. It's still, it's up in the what? 262 no 260 two, very close to uh, issue 262 came out right before christmas oh okay cool so he's still hard at work at it and also unlike us uh yeah unlike uh todd mcfarlane who's like oh you know i'm gonna go do toys i'm gonna do this i'll let someone else write spawn for a little bit i'll let someone else draw it eric larson has written and drawn every single savage dragon yeah that's insane i think i think at the moment though i think his son has taken over uh in some aspect the savage dragon's son has taken over in the book but i don't know if uh, Larson oh has okay I, oh okay i thought like maybe his, maybe his actual son because i was i was reading some stuff and the the people the way that people were talking about it was like his son uh, took over or something i, I, I couldn't understand whether it meant the character's son or the artist's son well you know the savage dragon's son i think his name is malcolm is really larson's son after a fashion when we think about it <laughs> Uh, That's true. Uh, Larson is, of course, self-taught, and you can tell he's mm -hmm. self-taught by looking at this picture. I have been lucky enough to stand by the man at a convention when he's drawn. He draws like no one else. He draws like a psychopath. <laughs> have you seen I know, him? yeah, lo looking at the picture, it's it's like how, like, a two-year-old yeah. would draw. He holds his pencil backwards, and he stabs the page. I shit yeah. you not, he stabs the page. And I saw, see, saw him do, like, a whole commission, and I'm like, this man has been doing this for 30 years. 
Is that just his style, or is I that guess. like, does he have to draw like that? I don't know. I'm sure he's. He talked doesn't have a disability, does he? No, I'm sure he's talked about it in depth, and like clearly it didn't stop him. He was one of the top artists of his oh, day. Yeah. I think yeah. he's just really unique, and he created a style all his own because he didn't go to art school. Okay. Okay. Which which many of the image guys didn't. Many of them were no. self taught. Maybe it's just that you know he's less shy about showing people how he actually draws. And honestly, I think mm -hmm. I think it's kind of amazing that he's been doing this for thirty years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that that's a little primer on Larson. Uh, the book came out in nineteen ninety two. Uh, I think it had a mini series, and then eventually it took off into uh, like an ongoing from ninety three, and that's the one that hasn't stopped. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the cartoon would end up dropping in 1995, and it was part of the USA Action Extreme team, which was their <laughs> block of shows on Saturday morning that they created to try and compete with, like, you know, what Disney and Fox and everyone else was doing at the time. Yeah, yeah. This is the same block that would give us the Mortal Kombat cartoon, the Wing Commander cartoon, the Wildcats cartoon. Mm-hmm. In fact, uh, there's a crazy storyline that we'll definitely cover, I promise, on Retro Hero Video at one point. It's called the Warrior King Saga, and they created a brand new character, USA Network, called the Warrior King to cross over all their shows on, like, one morning. Nice. Okay, I didn't know this. Yes, one legendary morning, they're like, we're going to cross over every show we have, even though they're in different universes, and even though, you know, some are video games, and some are cartoons, and some are comic-based. It's freaking wild. Very, very crazy that they did it. Yeah, yeah. Also makes perfect sense for the Savage Dragon, because Larson, as a creator, has always seemed to be really cool and laid back when it comes to crossing over. The Savage Dragon has crossed over with literally everybody. Yeah, I, I have seen some of the crossovers, and yeah, you're right. It's like every every image mm -hmm. uh, you can think of, every image character you can think of, I think he's crossed over with. Yep, he crossed over with the Ninja Turtles, like mm -hmm. very early on in his yep. run. I'm pretty sure he crossed over with Invincible. That might have just been a cover, but like he's mm -hmm. been there. Friggin' Savage Dragon was in Radiant Black just recently, like in the oh, background. Oh, really? Yeah, yes, in the background when they're sitting there in the bar on the TV, you <laughs> can see the Savage Dragon doing stuff. Oh, uh, that's cool. And I'm like, oh my god, it's still in the same universe. You can't, you cannot stop the Savage Dragon from crossing <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I have to respect the longevity of this character. Even if you don't like respect the man or the creative choices, he must be doing something right. I, yeah, I guess, I guess like he's just really easy to work with. I guess, yeah, I guess he's pretty laid back and cool and everything. And uh, we'll dig a little more in that as we actually jump into the very first episode, which is entitled RSVP. Yes. All right, so as we hop into the first episode, they waste absolutely zero time getting us acclimated. Who's who? What's going on? What city are we in? They really hit the ground running on this one and do not stop. Yeah, yeah, it, it just goes straight. Again, it's like an Im like 90s image. It just, just hits you with, like, colors and mm -hmm. action and Sounds, everything. Yeah. yeah, chaos. Now, apparently the whole show was like this. You know, this show probably got greenlit because of the success of your Batman the Animated Series and your X-Men Animated Series. They did not follow the same format in like, oh, you know, it's interconnected and everything and you gotta follow. No, you could basically watch any episode in any order and it didn't matter. Yeah, they're all self-contained. All fairly self-contained. Uh, we see we're, we're at Garbage Island, Chicago's famous Garbage Island. That's just Staten Island. <laughs> uh, ah, that's New York. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, though, yeah, the, the one of the major differences from Savage Dragon that you'll notice right away is he does not live in a fictional city. He lives in a no. very real city of Chicago. Yes, yes. He lives in a very real city, which I do believe at one point Chicago was the murder capital of the United States with, like, the highest violent crime rate. I want to say it still is. <laughs> no, I don't think it is. I think Detroit unseated them for a couple <laughs> of years, and everyone was calling Detroit Murder City. And then I believe right now, I think I checked this before we start. it's St. Louis, Maryland now is actually the highest murder <laughs> rate in America. Okay. <laughs> so if you're creating a brand new character, everyone, make them from St. Louis is what we're saying. St. Louis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just I just love that this is like already in an anachronism, like, oh, the horrible crime-ridden streets of Chicago. That's statistically not true anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, we're introduced to the Freaks, which are our stand-ins for mutants and metahumans and basically any irregular person with powers. Yeah. These freaks are evil, and they've got a bunch of stolen high-tech military weapons. Uh, th their names are wonderful. Again, you know, Larson, known as an artist, known as many things. Uh, I don't think he ever got any credit for how creative his naming could be. The big one is called Basher. Ooh. And the little guy, scientist with the split head, he's called Splithead. <laughs> and we're going to get way more great names like that throughout this. <laughs> I, I, I would love to see the notes, you know, from Larson and his work there. Ah, uh, yes, and then he shoot gun, and then he do good. <laughs> now, in Larson's defense, he had nothing to do with the cartoon. He basically signed off on it and cashed his check, and he had a pretty good reason to have nothing to do with the show, and that is because he was too busy writing wildly successful comic books at the time. Yeah, yeah, I guess the George Lucas thing. He's just like, ah, it's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. Sign off on it. I know this one wasn't as successful as Batman or X-Men, but it did have a very short-lived, like, THQ action figure line. I think I've seen the, the Savage Dragon action figure from that line. I'm sure they're very rare at this point. Oh, I imagine. I'm, I'm surprised, you know, McFarlane Toys hasn't done anything with them. You know, I mean, the, the, the retro repackaging of them. I, I'm sure they have. That is, if they get along. That's the problem with the image guys. Like, do they like each other this week or not? It's hard to tell. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is McFarlane, like, like taking someone's copyright again? What's going on? <laughs> well, that was the other thing about Image, too, is that, you know, uh, Larson was cool crossing over all of his characters and all of his things. So, you know, he I think, like, uh, some of his characters showed up in the Max, and obviously a bunch of characters mm -hmm. showed up in Spawn. But that became a real pain in the ass later on when you were trying to license and adapt stuff because it's like, oh, yeah. you don't own a bunch of the characters that are in this that we're trying to turn into a cartoon. Huh, that's yeah. difficult. Yeah. Uh, so we're introduced to a couple uh, members of the Chicago PD over there. We got Gilroy, Officer Gilroy, who looks like Fat Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> he really does, that's right, yeah. He's Fat Jimmy Olsen, and ah, jeez, I don't know about all them freaks over there. I'm gonna quit, they could keep my pension. Arr. Yeah, with cops like him, you can see why the murder rate was so high in yeah, Chicago. Tell me about it. Then we got uh, Officer Alex, who is basically uh, Savage Dragon's gal pal here. There's, there's a joke <laughs> later on that pisses me off where Savage Dragon's like, yeah, well, you're named after a man. And she's like, it's short for Alexandria. Oh. <laughs> he's pretty dumb savage right i don't know if he's this dumb in the comics but he is dumb as rocks in this cartoon he really is yeah they they also make the fact that he is an amnesiac like a running gag <laughs> uh so yeah the, the freaks the super freaks they're trafficking in super 90s guns you know big cable guns which are huge and shoot lasers yeah big guns that aren't really technically guns because it's a kid's cartoon so yeah. they they're like laser pistol sort of things yeah and no one actually gets shot either no 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 one actually gets shot they mostly just showed around so it's up to the savage dragon to stop these guys because obviously the rest of the chicago pd sucks and his plan to get inside garbage island is amazing because he digs his way up from under the ground and brings one <laughs> down like wait did he swim through there and dig through the garbage was was he already there how did that happen yeah, well, he's he's like a giant, like you know, dinosaur lizard man guy. So yeah, like just living in the trash. Yeah, I guess so. Also, I'm pretty sure he didn't introduce himself as an officer and say, you know, Chicago PD, you're under arrest, or you know, I have a search warrant. I'm pretty sure he's already breaking a ton of laws right now. That's what we don't see, like at the end of the episode when you know the the villain's been arrested. They <laughs> they they just like after the show cuts, they, they like an officer asks, "Okay, did you get your rights read to you?" <laughs> no, okay, you're free to go. That's that's why the villains keep getting let free. Yeah, <laughs> they keep getting yeah. off on technicalities. Yeah, and it savage. works because because he's amnesiac and he keeps forgetting. Ah, oh, damn it, my bad. <laughs> See, that would have been a good running gag. <laughs> See, that's the funny thing, too. Like, I don't think, like, I don't personally know Larson's own politics and everything, but I don't think he's stupid, and because he's been writing the book for 30 years, I think he knows full well that, you know, Americans' opinion of police and the police-industrial complex has changed over the years. I know during the 2016 election, Savage Dragon's son, like, left America and moved to Canada, and the book has just stayed in Canada. I was going to say, I'm yeah, I'm pretty sure he's 
quite a uh, a liberal guy just because I remember I saw a, an issue of Savage Dragon that was literally like Trump chasing them out of like the country. Oh, that's funny. Well, I, I <laughs> like, get those aliens and yeah. Well, it's funny because I read like the first new issue, the one from uh, to 262, and I'm like, okay, let's actually see what's going on in this book now. Obviously, for a series that's been running for 30 years, I had no goddamn idea what was going on. But one thing that I found interesting is that there were people walking around in COVID masks in the background. Oh, okay. And I'm like, whoa, even DC and Marvel don't do that. I guess that's what you can get away with when you have, like, a creator-owned book. You're like, no, I want this to actually, you know, reflect the world we live in right now. Yeah, really. And I'm like, that's fucking crazy. So, Savage Dragon fights the freaks, and we see why Splithead has that name, and I must admit, that is a horrifying image to see this guy's head split open and have a big bleh, tongue and teeth. That, 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 that's definitely, like, that's like the toy. Oh, 100%. The gimmick of the toy, yeah. Oh, yeah, they totally created that guy with the toy in mind. So, he makes short work of these guys, as you do, but, oh, no classic cartoon gambit the dumb guy I, I rigged garbage island to explode and i'm gonna press the button and we're all gonna die of course yeah i guess he didn't think that through and savage dragon's like not on my watch punk i'm gonna get you <laughs> i'm gonna get you good uh savage dragon in this show is actually voiced by jim cummings did you know that Oh, really? Yes. I thought he sounded a bit familiar. Winnie the Pooh and the Shocker and like a million other characters. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to Jim Cummings trying to play a tough guy. I'm really not. No, that's true. I will say this. The show suffers in animation quality. It suffers in the writing department. Amazing voice cast. We got Jim Cummings here as Savage Dragon. Uh, Officer Alex is voiced by Kath Sosis. We'll get Tony J later on in this. Mmm. If you wonder where the money went, it went to, like, actually pretty goddamn good actors. Well, you have to think, like, like mid-90s, they probably weren't as big. They're not as big as they are now. No, that's true. Yeah, a lot of yeah. them are still working their way up. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Savage Dragon is particularly upset because they broke his glasses, and considering that he's got a giant <laughs> green freak head, I imagine they're very hard to find. Very hard to find, yeah. <laughs> also, uh, the big dumb guy Basher ends up stepping on the remote. Which in turn blows mm -hmm. up the island, but it blows it up at his feet. Where I'm like, wait, no, the, the detonator isn't the thing that explodes. The bomb <laughs> yeah, detonator the is not the bomb. <laughs> also, even though this entire island gets nuked, the Savage Dragon comes out and is totally fine. Yeah, well, of course. Because he's also invulnerable. And also, I know those villain guys showed up in other episodes too, so this was a really ineffectual bombing plot. Yeah. The hell did you rig the explosives with? Goddamn firecrackers? Yeah, it was just fireworks. <laughs> Also, they destroyed all of Garbage Island, so where is the city supposed to put their garbage now? Again, like, again, that could have been a running gag where every episode you just see more garbage on the streets just starting to sort of pile up. Yeah, friggin' Internal Affairs is gonna have a field day with this. Yeah, some guy throwing batteries into the fucking river and shit. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, now, even though Chicago PD loves Savage Dragon because he gets the job done and he's one of them good freaks, you know, who helps us fight the bad <laughs> freaks, he doesn't have a lot of fans in the media. And, oh my god, I didn't think this show had its own J. Jonah Jameson, but this show has a Jameson that, like, our J.J. would say, hey, calm the hell down, man, you're making it a little obvious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this guy's like, ah, I fucking hate that Savage Dragon so much. Write stories about how he's an evil freak and he blew up Garbage Island to sell more papers. <laughs> and the people working for him was like, but that'd be fake news, sir. We can't do it. Ah, I don't care. Ah. <laughs> also, this guy's name is R. Richards and he runs the R. Richards building. And I'm like, hey, fuck yeah. you. that's really close to Reed Richards. Yeah, yeah, and he, yeah, his building even has his, like, R. Richards on the top of it. Yeah, I'm like, that's very close. He's even got the salt and pepper in his hair, a la Reed. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so this journalist guy is leading a one-man crusade against uh, the Savage Dragon, which is hilarious because this is now the second show we've covered now, where it's like, well, the media just let the heroes do their job. We did it in that Fantastic Four cartoon, and we're doing it here now. Yeah. I guess it's true the whole, you know, fake news idea is actually a very old idea that we've been dealing with. Yeah, it's been there all the time. <laughs> been here this whole time. Though hilariously, like, everything they're saying that the Savage Dragon is a bad guy for doing, he actually did do. Yeah, 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 it's all true. <laughs> yeah, he, like, doesn't even, like, try and argue with any. He's like, yep, I did that thing. What are you gonna do? 
Yeah, yeah, what are you gonna do? Kill me? Yeah, what are you gonna do? Arrest me? You can't arrest <laughs> yeah. me. I'll arrest you. Yeah, I'm a cop. I, I'll just plant evidence on you. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Again, the politics of this show, which was a kid's show in 1995, very much feels 1995. I almost kind of want to go and read newer Savage Dragons to be like, okay, but how did he actually deal with this? Because there's definitely some stuff you could say here should you want to. Yeah, again, it's like the the whole thing of like the '90s when you see like like police related things in the '90s. There was like so many cops like this, and it, it also feels like like it's like the parody in The Simpsons, the McBain parody. Very like, much so. <laughs> and he even kind of looks like McBain. He's like just he big really muscular does. guy who just does whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah, he gets the job done though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, as we discover, this media crusade is in part being puppeteered by our big baddie of the show, Overlord. Get it? Because he's the overlord of crime in the city. Yeah. His code yeah. name is Overlord. I'm glad they they uh they sorted that out. Yeah. Yeah, glad they spelt that out. Or I, I just wouldn't have known what his job was and role in the show no. if they didn't. No. Uh, he's voiced by Tony J. Uh, who was, of course, yep. Megabyte in the reboot cartoon and Judge Claude Frollo in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Amazing voice, this guy. Yep, and he looks like a version of the Shredder that's like it's like a toy version. It's like like like, ac like something action mm. version variant of the character. You know, they, you get different like, like lava variants and all that sort of stuff. It now, looks like that for Shredder. <laughs> now, that's very interesting that you said Shredder. I instantly saw Strife, Cable's brother. That's mm, who I saw. Yeah, 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 the mask. He's got a little Strife, and his character is just straight up riffing on Magneto. He's like, oh, you know, the humans <laughs> will never accept us freaks, you know, because they call us freaks, which seems really insensitive. <laughs> <laughs> they'll never accept us and they wonder why we do crime but oh oh i'm just so horny for the savage dragon if only i could get him to join my cause and see that the humans are the bad ones and that's basically his plan you know, i'm going to use this media crusade against him to get the savage dragon on my side mm -hmm. uh dragon is driving around there with his partner and they kind of start leaning in the direction of telling us what his origin is basically he just woke up in the street in like a big ring of fire one day and he didn't remember his origin and he didn't remember anything and so frank his kindly mystical magical african-american police mentor said hey you know what you're big and tough you should be a cop and apparently after just a year this amnesiac dragon man got to join the chicago pd yeah yeah I, again a year is like from what we know in real life, a year seems a bit too long to be in police training for for to be a cop. I was gonna say it didn't sound long enough to me, but I could be wrong. Someone, <laughs> someone Google that. How long does it actually take to be certified as a cop? Oh, I'm fairly certain I saw stuff that's like oh six months. Some people like train for like three months, stuff like that. I think it, it varies. Right. But yeah, well, I know it's not as long as it should be. Not as long as you'd think. But of course, then it's also, his name is The Savage Dragon, so I'm sure his, you know, professors were afraid to fail him, and they're like, yeah, 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 you're good, just get out of here, just get out of here. <laughs> Here's your badge and your gun, get on the street. <laughs> Start doing stuff. Uh, it's while they're driving around, they find out that Frank, the Savage Dragon's mentor, oh, he's been kidnapped. Mm. Oh, no. Oh no. And you know, he hugs his wife Mildred and he's like, don't worry, we're gonna get him back. <laughs> and uh, it seems that Frank has been kidnapped by a spider monster. Yeah, a creepy spider monster. Creepy spider monster with like toilet paper on his face. <laughs> it does look like toilet. He's been rolling around in the garbage. <laughs> Too much. Also, he's a spider guy and his code name is Arachnid. Of course, yeah. Once How would you know? He was a spider guy if they didn't tell you. If you didn't tell. What's crazy about him, though, is the voice he chooses. Mm, the voice he chooses. He's doing a snake voice. And I'm like, well, what are you? Are you a spider or a snake? You got to pick one. Again, it's like the it's the <coughs> classic, like, kind of cowardly villain guy. Yeah. Like, it's like a Starscream or something. Very much what, so. Was Waspinator and stuff oh, like that. Waspinator. Hey, when are we going to do Beast Wars on the show, man? I've been sitting on this forever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, seriously, I, I know they're doing, like, more Beast Wars stuff on, like, Netflix recently, but seriously, guys, call me. I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so Savage Dragon fights it out with Arachnid and makes makes just so many quips. He's a real quip machine in this. I do not remember him making so many jokes. Is it because, like, 
Spider-Man, the animated series? I guess, you know, or is or like are they trying to riff on like cop movie one-liners? I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit of both, really. It is. The the action in this show is also weird and hard to follow sometimes. So he fights the spider guy, he gets out of the sewer, but the spider guy somehow managed to get behind him quick enough to kidnap his partner and he's like, "Oh, Alex, watch out." Only to have a completely unrelated truck come from behind and hit him. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what the what the f just happened? And again, my child brain probably didn't notice any of this, but my adult brain does. Yeah, yeah, your child brain is ah, oh, colors, action, Basically. chaos, cool. <laughs> also, uh, again, you know, the you may have noticed the USA logo down in the corner of some of these shots, and also that they're very tiny and shitty because this is what you know '90s television looked like. These were the aspect mm -hmm. ratios. Uh, apparently, and I had to figure this out like minutes before we started recording, Savage Dragon was basically lost media for a minute because they mm -hmm. never put it out on DVD. Apparently, just recently, though, you can actually stream all 26 episodes on Peacock. Yeah, well, I, I couldn't, so I had to, like, watch it on YouTube in, like, parts. Uh, I found mine. It was a full thing. I found mine on the Internet Archive because, again, people thought that it was lost media for a minute. Mm -hmm. So people actually went out of their way to kind of put it together, and it's got it's got kind of this jitteriness to it, and I don't know if that's just because people assembled all these different parts together over the years, or if it actually looked like that once upon a time. I imagine it also had to do something, might have something to do with, like, Powell and NTSC, mm -hmm. and, like, just, like, how it was actually televised, Maybe. like something fucked with like yeah how it was and when when they like put it through i guess like a trans code or something yeah because these fucked it up because these are again almost 30 year old vhs transfers off television yeah yeah and, and chances are though though the copy they had is like a copy of a copy mm. and the more you copy a vhs it just gets the worse. worse it gets yeah they probably lost the masters that's why i would be interested to see the peacock stuff to be like yo is this actually the original stuff did you track it down yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Savage Dragon wrecks a truck, and apparently this is just the smoking gun that our Richards in the media needs to really roast his ass. Hey, he broke my truck. Yeah, I, I love the, the truck driver. Same. He just, he, like, he looks like a truck driver. Yes, he does. Savage Dragon don't care about the working man. How am I supposed to pay my alimony now? <laughs> you know, I was supposed to pay my alimony. They're going to find out I got a couple DUIs when the cops show up. That's going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I was hauling fruit and migrant workers. <laughs> I can't, In the same trailer. <laughs> yeah, I can't handle this. Not today. Right, workers pick the fruit. <laughs> yeah, and then he just runs away. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Alex has been taken back to Overlord's base of operations, where we see that Frank is there as well. And naturally, when the good guys are all here, it's time for Overlord to give his villainous spiel about what it is he actually wants. Now, do you remember what his plan was, Matt? Because his plan is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I don't. His plan is, I shit you not, I have kidnapped the two most important people in the life of Savage Dragon, and I am going to send him a letter that says RSVP on it, which is the title of the episode. <laughs> I'm going to send him this letter and tell him to meet me at the big Chicago baseball stadium, and there we're going to talk, and I'm going to tell him to join my team. I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a big pitch to him because the media is all pissed at him right now. He's obviously gonna want to join me. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like they they like name the episode and like, whoa, how can we tie that into the into like the episode? Yeah. Like, how how do we make oh, like shit, the episode yeah. title the the like crux of the story? Oh, we'll send have the villain send him an RSVP a to letter. like his death. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, yeah, they, they came up with the title first and then wrote an episode around it. I just love, to. this is so 90s. This villain's plot is built entirely around sending a letter because there's no emails, no texts, no cell phones. He might be able to page him at some point, but he would need to be by a phone to call him and make his villainous <laughs> demand. He's going to send him a letter to tell him to be by a specific payphone yeah, yeah. at a specific time, and then he'll call the payphone. Yeah, like Dirty Harry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amazing. This is so, this is so like couched in the era that this is. <laughs>
But yeah, so Savage Dragon is on the case, and you know, he's ready to take it to the Richards building. And you figure like, oh, are we going to see him, you know, work some contacts? Are we going to see him, you know, look for clues or everything? No, he just literally shows up at the building that the bad guy is in. Yeah, yeah, just shows up. He just knew, again, doesn't show up with a warrant, doesn't show up with backup. He just shows up, and there's a hilarious, like, animation thing here where he's looking at the directory for the building, but they're all blank. <laughs> except nothing for, there. Except for the one he wants. Yeah, I, I have to assume that was a bit... <laughs> I, you would think, like, maybe that's just, like, a pissed-off animator joke, because that is totally an animator joke. Like, I'm not going to write a bunch of lines here. He only wants the one. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I like that, that 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 could also be a joke, just because, like, uh, Savage Dragon's kind of an idiot. Yes, he's Batman. He is not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, too, uh, uh, yes, you, you, your eyes are not deceiving you. The villain just so happens to rent office space in the same office building as the corrupt journalist, you know, editor who's trying to take down Savage Dragon. <laughs> and this this happens completely independently of each other, as we find out later. R. Richards actually had no idea that Overlord was renting office space from him. <laughs> also, why is the villain renting office space? Hey, you, you know, he needs a place so, like, he can get his mail sent to uh, him. True and... enough. You know, you know, it's a tax tax write off. Yeah, it's a tax shelter as is. Also, his cover is a shoe company. It's called like uh, Overton Shoes or something, which obviously it's like an anagram. You move around the letters and it spells out Overlord. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which Savage Dragon is even smart enough to figure that out. Like, oh, look at you hiding your name in plain sight. <laughs> and when he gets there, uh, Basher, who lived, who survived the explosion, he's there, and he's like, look at my big gun I got, Savage Dragon, it's the biggest, baddest gun ever. And this did make me laugh. Savage Dragon's like, yeah, but my gun is bigger and newer. <laughs> <laughs> also, I am certain that gun is not police issue, sir. <laughs> I'm pretty sure anything you do with that is excessive force. Again, it's it's like fucking it's like McBain. It's how so he's got like a, a huge fucking hand cannon later he's compared gonna, to everyone else's smaller guns. Later he's gonna fight the Kami Nazis and get Mendoza. Yeah, yeah. Also, I, I love too the fake shoe company that Overlord set up. I see the name because he 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 has a logo in the background. He commissioned an artist to do the logo. Yeah. it's called Old Rover Shoes. Get it? Because you put it together and it becomes Overlord. Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, also, too, again, so much guns, not a lot of shooting. Basher basically gets taken off, like, with a bunch of smoke in the background, and the only hit we see is Overlord punching his TV screen, because it's like, ah, you bumbling fools. Mm -hmm. you, you did it again, damn yeah. it. Yeah, again, 90s cartoon can't show, like, people being shot. Can't show too much violence, which was, again, another problem that Larson had because he's put in his own writings. He always imagined that Savage Dragon would be a little bit racier. In fact, in old interviews, he even went as far as to say that he always envisioned Savage Dragon as being the middle ground to, like, a Marvel and a Vertigo, which he says, you know, I wanted it to be smarter than your average Marvel comic that I worked on, but I wanted it to be less pretentious than Vertigo, and I'm like, oh, the man who wrote Savage Dragon for 30 years calling Vertigo pretentious? <laughs> well, if any of his recent outings in, in Savage Dragon are to be believed, uh, fucking, it's no middle ground. It's it's Ooh, just yes. a, a completely, like, like hard R book yeah i'm glad you mentioned that at some point too because again larson owns the freaking rights to this and can do whatever he wants with it at some point he just decided that savage dragon was going to be an 18 plus book now so he could draw some of the most hardcore sex scenes you have ever yeah. seen i was legitimately surprised at that i was shocked too like again because i i did a lot of research for this matt i was sure to look at all the hardcore sex so i knew what i was talking about <laughs> and and i was literally thinking to myself like oh everyone's being so puritanical i bet it's yeah not yeah that bad. So i thought it was going to be something like we see in like a marvel or a dc yeah. where it's like just a little bit of skin no <laughs> yeah like i thought like oh you know it'll be tasteful you know they'll be like obscured by shadows or mist or yeah. something or you know yeah. it'll be it, it'll serve the plot of like no they are just full-on raw dogging 
And, like, threesomes, and, like, there's one panel I saw that became kind of infamous. And, again, it's not even this Savage Dragon. This Savage Dragon we're watching now sacrifices himself, like, in the early 200s after he does find out his origin. Turns out he's an evil, like, alien warmonger who lost okay. his memory when he came to Earth. Okay. So he sacrifices himself in the early 200s, and his freaking son took over. It's his son who's doing all the hardcore boning. There's a thing he does to a woman in this. Well, technically, she does it to herself because it's an accident. But, oh, my God, I saw it. And I'm like, I cannot believe that he drew this and that that actually got out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it got into the comic and is out there in the yeah, world. Yeah, like, like, I'm not a squeamish man by any, you know, regard. I mean, shit, I grew up with the internet, man. I've seen some hardcore shit. But when I looked at this, I'm like, what? Oh, Eric Larson, are you all right? <laughs> I wouldn't even think of that, and you drew it. <laughs> you lovingly rendered it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, I guess you got to get get it off somehow, you know? And I mean, if you're writing a book for 30 years, you got to keep it interesting. <laughs> what is there left to do? <laughs> So yeah, Savage Dragon saves his two cop buddies. Though not really, he takes off just enough of their webbing so they can talk, but then he ends up having to fight the spider guy again. Yeah, yeah, and he just he beats it by just, like, punching it. <laughs> well, not even that, he beats him by grabbing his tongue, essentially. Yeah, that's right, yeah. He grabs the spider guy's tongue, he's like, Ugh, got your tongue! <laughs> just, just quipping, 90% of his dialogue is quips. <laughs> He beats the spider guy, and I think it's funny that, like, his two teammates have to free themselves. Yeah. You know what it would have been, like, the best way to beat it? What? So, so Overlord has set up a shoe company. Mm -hmm. Oh, he hits him <laughs> with a big shoe? Yeah, and he's, like, made, like, a... It's, like, like the company's, like... Like, uh, like, got, like, like, like a big shoe as part of their logo. Their thing. Something. I love it. He, like, he, like, drops it on it. <laughs> Matt, see, this is why we should, you know, collaborate on writing stuff. Because, yeah, exactly. That's a brilliant <laughs> bit. How do you not take the spider guy out with a giant shoe? Hell, do the Simpsons bit where he puts the boot on his arm. It's like, back, back, yeah. you. Yeah, it's like that big boot Bart gets, like, punted with exactly. when he goes back to Australia. Yeah. <laughs> and the spider guy is scared of boots, of course, because they're, like, spider kryptonite. Yeah, yeah. So, again, even though this is just episode one, and this is usually something you think they would have to build up to, no, Savage Dragon and Overlord, they start circling each other for their big showdown. <laughs> also, what powers does Overlord has that makes him, like, you know, the top dog in this city? Mostly he just shoots lasers from his hand is the thing that he does. Yeah, the, the, the classic, classic power of the 90s. Yeah, and because they can't really fight, they start they start wrestling each other on the top of the building, and they're wrestling, and they're wrestling. And eventually, Savage Dragon takes him out by taking the big C from Richard and just throwing it at him. <laughs> Again, I don't think you Mirandized him, sir. I don't think you said, hey, stop in the name of the law. I'm pretty sure that's just murder. <laughs> Don't worry, this is before the time of, you know, cops having to wear cameras on them. It's fun. We'll say he yeah. slipped. Yeah, yeah. I actually did read him his rights. He can't tell us that we Any didn't because he's dead. <laughs> look, look, Overlord had a small amount of cocaine on him is all we're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we found some guns on him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, how, how are we ever going to win this war on drugs if we don't throw giant seas? Also, too, this is your main villain of the show, and he gets not only defeated, but super pantsed in the first episode. Yeah, yeah. Like, why yeah. would I ever come back? He got hit by a big sea and fell off a building into the ocean. <laughs> Yeah, that's something, like, everyone's going to be talking about for years. And the other cops have no problem with it either. They're like, hey, that's throwing some garbage in Lake Michigan, whackity smack, how do you do? <laughs> Which would also be a crime, throwing garbage in Lake Michigan. Yes, yep. Which, it's funny, too, you also remember that this is the 90s as well, because they also have to kind of put in an ecological message, because, you know, R. Richards, the journalist, is like, ha, I got you, you broke into my building, and you killed a man in front of everyone you're going down i'm gonna write so many papers about you only for dragon to turn it around on him to be like yeah i might have murdered someone i might have abused my powers as a police officer but your company is leaking ink into the environment and doing bad against the environment is the worst thing you can do in 1995 dick <laughs> and he instantly changes his tone to oh no no they're gonna find out i'm a big polluter oh no 
<laughs> I guess you're fine now, Savage Dragon. You keep you keep doing you. And th this is also where they try and get a catchphrase over because again, it's '95 and everyone has to have a catchphrase. Yeah. And the Savage Dragon is like, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're a human or a freak. What only matters is good or evil. I'm Savage Dragon and I'm a cop. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe to throw your batteries in the ocean. Basically, yeah. Don't throw your batteries in the ocean or I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's the episode, everyone. That's episode one. RSVP. Oh yeah, he also read the letter and crumpled it up at some point too. So why this episode was called RSVP, I will never know. Yeah, he barely gave a shit about it. No, no, it was literally. It is such an afterthought. It's kind of hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that was Savage Dragon episode one. I'm not gonna lie, I actually had a lot of fun watching this one. It's not a good show, but it is a wonderful good bad show. It is, yeah. I had a laugh riot just thinking like, you know, imagine the paperwork he'd have to sign when all of this is done. Imagine <laughs> the eternal affairs he would have to deal with. Yeah, the, the, the like years long court like battle he would be in. We, we will also have to, like, uh, come back to this show, too, because there's, like, several characters that started on the show or at least got adapted in the show who are still in the comics now. There's Mako, the Shark Man. There's She-Dragon. Yes, because he's such a Hulk ripoff Savage Dragon. He has his own She-Hulk and She-Dragon. <laughs> I remember really liking She-Dragon when I was younger for some reason, so let's let, let's find out why that is. I don't remember. <laughs> okay. He, he also has, like, a, a red-skinned delinquent who he takes under his wing who literally just looks like Omega Red. Yeah, yeah, again, it's, 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 it's ripping off the whole, Ripping you know. off the whole just a little bit for 30 years. <laughs> Doing something right. There's, there's also another villain who didn't work with Overlord, but who I think I remember being my favorite. He was made of leeches. I don't remember what his name was, mm, but okay. he, he was just a cloak and he was made of leeches. Okay, I didn't know that. And he had That's a pretty cool. Voice. I remember as a kid being like, "Yo, that's such a cool design." He's just leeches. <laughs> I think his name was like Horde or Swarm or something. Okay, Some I didn't know that. That's a, like a pretty cool idea for a villain there, there are like admittedly some cool ideas in savage right i'm not gonna say it's all stupid because again i don't think you could run for 30 years if everything was stupid i actually looked at the savage dragon wiki there is a really well put together savage dragon wiki hmm. so clearly there are fans who give a shit and are like taking care of it and everything i don't want them to think you know oh they're just shitting on a thing i like no no, no we admit there's some fun stuff attached i'm just saying this show is silly as hell <laughs> But there you go, everyone. That'll just about do it for another episode of Retro Hero Video. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Yep. And we'll be sure to be back again for more 90s image madness. I don't know which one we're doing next. We're doing Spawn next or the Max next, but we're doing one of we're doing one Ooh, of them. Yeah, the Spawn. I, I remember the Spawn. Is that is that the HBO one? Yes, it is. Yeah, that, we, that one's actually pretty fucking it's good. It's actually pretty good. We might have to do that one last. Maybe we'll do the Maxis. Oh, and I think I had Ultra Force in there somewhere, too, which is 90s but not Image. Nice. We should check out uh, Men in Black as well. Oh, yeah. I oh, see. Okay, Men in Black I want to do as an arc with, like, ones based on movies. I wanted to do that and Godzilla and, well, like, well, Technically, the Men in Black comic, it, it, it's based on the comic, the That's Malibu true. comic, which is technically a Marvel comic now. Well, you, we got to do that with, like, Godzilla and Big Guy and Rusty because they yeah. all have the same art style. They did, yeah, and it's a great art style I, as well. Yeah, why, why don't things look like that anymore? That's a great art style that everyone ditched way too freaking early. It's a great art style that had some, like, really good, like, monster designs. Yeah. Like, really, like, fucked up looking things. Yeah, yeah monsters and robots, it was good. But now, now we're talking about future arcs we're going to do, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. And again, if you have an idea for a future arc you would like to see us cover in detail here on Retro Hero, please tell us down in the comments section and we'll hope to get to it. Yeah. Yeah, so until then, everyone, bye bye See ya.